Everybody, welcome to another walkthrough. This time I'll go through uh, the tokenomics of ThorChain. I've done an article about this, and if you want to see all the details, I recommend reading that. I'll link it down below. And yeah, so this is just the diagram of that article, and I'll, I'll kind of go through and explain how ThorChain works and how the rune token is used. There's a total supply of 500 million of these tokens. They've been yeah distributed to the community, to investors and all that kind of stuff. So there's a link or there's a, a description, a section on that in the article that you can read if you want to see more details. So ThorChain is a decentralized uh, cross-chain exchange. And I guess that's something that's uh, kind of really interesting because if you exchange two tokens, um, and if you don't want to do that only in the Ethereum ecosystem, like say on Uniswap, where you do a swap for two different ERC-20 tokens, but you'd like to exchange Bitcoin for Ethereum, <clears throat> the only way to do that really right now is to use a centralized exchange. That means you have to transfer your tokens over to Coinbase or Binance. You can do your swap there, <clears throat> and then you can transfer it, withdraw it back to your wallet. But it, you have to, at some point, send your coins over to that exchange. Uh, at least that's the case for most cases I've heard of. And... Um, yeah, so there's there's no way to do this decentralized. You know, we're all banging the drum about being decentralized, but most of the token exchanges that we do are still running on centralized exchanges. So this is a really interesting project, right? So ThorChain is this blockchain based on the Cosmos SDK. They've built a whole bunch of stuff on top of it and um, kind of allow other exchanges to use um, their blockchain to run that right so shapeshift and thorswap they've both implemented exchanges on top of thorchain so if you'd go to thorswap it would look very similar to uniswap and that's because it is <laughs> from a front-end perspective so a user might go there and he'd request there to have his bitcoin natively non-wrapped swapped for ethereum natively non-wrapped so you plug in both of your wallets your bitcoin your ethereum wallet you execute that exchange Bitcoin leaves your wallet and you get Ethereum. That's it. And um, really simple. And how they do it is is similar to how Uniswap and all these other exchanges, automated market makers, do it. They have liquidity pools. And so ThorChain um, makes sure or runs these uh, liquidity pools. And in these liquidity pools, they're different to Uniswap in a way that Uniswap has token pairs on them. So there's a USDC DAI pair, and that will make sure that you can only swap these two tokens. How ThorChain does it, they have a pool for every asset they allow to trade, that, and that's paired to Rune. So there's a Bitcoin Rune pair, there's an Ethereum Rune pair, there's a Doge Rune pair, and, and so on and so forth. And what that does, it um, allows for fewer pools to exist. Like Uniswap has a ton of pools. Um, ThorChain will only have a very small amount of pools, but these pools will be a lot deeper. So the pool for Bitcoin to ruin, that'll be a very, very deep pool. And all these trades can kind of happen from there. And yeah, so this liquidity, like with Uniswap and other um, decentralized exchanges, comes from liquidity providers, right? So these are uh, people who have tokens and they would like to earn some yield with them. So this is actually a really cool possibility for someone who'd like to um, earn yield with Bitcoin. So you could deposit your Bitcoin into such a pool and you would get a yield based on the trades that happen, right? So the trader, he does his uh, Ethereum to Bitcoin swap and you pay a fee for that swap in Rune and that Rune then partially goes to the liquidity provider, giving them a reward, incentivizing them to provide liquidity for these different tokens that are offered on you on, on ThorChain. And in order to deposit, um, the the liquidity provider has to match his position. Like let's say he wants to deposit one million in Bitcoin, he has to match that with one million worth of, of rune in that pool. And and yeah, that gets into the pool and then you get a percentage of, of that kind of as as the reward so that this so far looks like uniswap and any other exchange so the interesting bit that comes in is the, how they utilize their their thorchain blockchain to secure 
and facilitate these kind of cross-chain exchanges, right? Because at the end of the day, these wallets that hold the tokens, they're on different blockchains completely, right? So you need to bridge them um, between each other. You need to at least monitor this stuff and, and make sure that works. So how they do it is they have their own nodes called Thor nodes. Um, these Thor nodes, they have to run a full node for every blockchain they support. Um, let's go with our example. We'll have what we want to do a Bitcoin for Ethereum swap and this Thor node will then have to run an Ethereum node and a blockchain node, uh, a Bitcoin node and a Thor chain node. And what a node is, <coughs> is a complete copy of all transactions that happen on Ethereum. I don't know if they run a full node or like a, um, a version kind of doesn't have all the latest, all the transactions that ever happened. But anyway, what they do with that they ensure that on their machine, on their physical computer uh, or server that they're running, they have all these transactions that occur. So they can see for themselves, this is uh, the consensus that the network has reached on the Bitcoin transaction that's gone through and the same for Ethereum. So they have to run all that. And then they have a ThorChain network, of course, securing the own ThorChain network. And the node operators, they get, they get rewarded for that. So if we go back to our example, where a user of ThorSwap wants to change Bitcoin for Ethereum, he would send his Bitcoin to ThorSwap. They would then put that to the liquidity pool and, and it would go to one it would go to this Bitcoin wallet. And these Thor nodes, they kind of have something like a multi-sig arrangement with access to that wallet. But they also, since they're running this node, they would see on their own hardware that the Bitcoin has arrived in this wallet, right? And and all these Thor nodes, they could then verify that and together they could observe this event and agree on when it happened and that it occurred. And if it has occurred, so if the, the Bitcoin has arrived in that wallet, they would then go on and sign a transaction for the Ethereum wallet to send Ethereum to that trader's wallet. So the, the, the swap amount of Ethereum would then be sent over to um, that that uh, that trader, right? So there's a fee in Rune paid, and these guys see that the the Bitcoin is here, and then they would sign a transaction that the the Ethereum goes over. And they don't actually do this with multi-sig wallets; they do that with uh, threshold signature schemes. And this is an interesting cryptographic innovation. I, I'm sure there's a, there's a paper on it if you really want to dive in deep into this. But it's kind of like a multi-sig, but without a a smart contract so that multiple parties can sign on a transaction which then kind of makes it safe right so that these multiple thor nodes would have to agree on that this is a valid transaction they sign it and then the the the, the tokens get sent so that's kind of how these thor nodes work and then these thor nodes they're connected in a way that we that, that will look familiar to proof of stake they i think they call it proof of bond or something like that but every Thor node will have to post a bond similar to in a like a validator for Ethereum. They ha have to post, um, they have to stake 32 ETH. So these guys will have to stake a certain amount of rune to become a Thor node operator. And that amount of rune that needs to be bonded, that is tied to the total amount of liquidity that was deposited into these uh, rune pools. And that amount, the, the, the double of that amount needs to be needs to be bonded, right? So let's say we have a million Bitcoin in this pool, and then we have the equivalent amount of a million dollars in Rune in this pool. And then the bond needs to be two million. And that is to secure this network. And they're trying to prevent something that's called a Sybil attack, where someone would try to gain the majority in these Thor nodes to manipulate transactions or do something fraudulent. And because to, in order to get to that position, that attacker would have to hold so much rune that when he, when he attempts to do that attack, rune would lose in value a lot. And which, yeah, the, the idea of this is then rune loses so much value that it doesn't make sense to actually do that attack. Because the amount of rune that you would have to hold is more 
in in dollar terms is more than the amount of Bitcoin that you would receive for that attack. So that's kind of the background behind this um, using that token there. Yeah, so that's kind of how this Thorchain ecosystem comes together. And um, I guess one last thing, if you hold Rune, you've got some governance rights that you can use. And those are partially used for voting or deciding on what other chains they want to onboard next. I guess the current uh, chain they're working on and onboarding is the Terra ecosystems so that you can decentralize, that, that you have the ability to um, exchange Luna or UST for something like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And yeah, I think Thorchain is a really interesting way of designing their tokenomics. They've really embedded this token deeply into the functionality of this. So it's used in the liquidity pool, in the liquidity pools, it's used for um, the bonding, and uh, they also, you know, use their, um, use it to collect fees. So yeah, it's really, really interesting. And I guess one aspect that uh, I should mention is this, like there's for every one dollar of asset, that's what I've explained earlier, right? So there's, there's one million Bitcoin, there needs to be three million uh, in dollar terms of Rune. So the higher the pools get, the more demand there is for Rune, kind of, yeah, that, that could drive uh, some interesting behaviors there for the, for the Rune token. Anyway, this is, uh, this is it for the uh, Thorchain. If you're more interested, have a look at the at the article. I'll link it below. Thanks for listening.